Welcome back to Purple Collar Life. Today's video, like it says in the title, we got some, I don't know if I'd call it disturbing news, disappointing news, but definitely some news about our F-350 with the 7.3 Godzilla gas engine. Now, before we talk about the disappointing results of our oil analysis test, we had that done by Blackstone, and I'm gonna go through that with you line by line along with the analysis they gave us. I need to give this truck a bath because it's been you know, pretty dirty the last few weeks. We've had rain and no time to actually give it a bath out here in the sunshine. I've made videos before about washing stuff. I always use the two bucket system and I do use the Chemical Guys grit guard or something like that in the bottom so that all the debris goes down through that, doesn't get on your sponges or your mitts. You don't want to scratch that stuff into the surface of a new truck. Another note real quick, I did get this Melnor new sprayer to use for this summer. This one I got at Home Depot and this thing is junk right off the bat. This is probably the worst sprayer I've ever used brand new. It does have adjustment, but it doesn't put out much water. The Super Duty cleans up really nice. You can see it looks beautiful here after a bath. Now we weren't looking for red when we were looking for a truck. We were looking for maybe a silver or a tan, something a little bit easier to keep clean. But I'll tell you what, when you give this thing a good bath and it gets all shined up, people notice the red is a beautiful color. And now that we have it, we're so glad we have red. So if this is your first Purple Color Life video, you probably don't know, we've got other videos about why we switched from the Power Stroke Diesel to the Godzilla 7.3. And just one of those reasons was that we had a lot of trouble with that diesel engine. It cost us a lot in maintenance. It seems like we were always having problems with the diesel emissions and all the various components of a diesel engine for towing our fifth wheel camper. So when we were looking for a truck, we were looking for this 7.3 Godzilla gas engine because it had the horsepower and torque we needed to do some heavy towing. We wanted an F-350 that was able to do what we wanted to do without having to have a diesel anymore. The Godzilla fit the bill. And then a couple months ago, I made a video called FAQs. We get a lot of questions about the Godzilla engine and the F-350 truck in general. So that video addressed a lot of those frequently asked questions we get on the channel. But then in those comments, I started seeing something. People were telling me to watch out for this Godzilla engine because of cam and lifter failure. And they're calling it delamination. I think it's probably spalling of those metal components. And what's happening in some vehicles is that that cam and lifter delamination is happening somewhere in the 40 to 50,000 mile range. So at the time, we were at about 24,000 miles, it started to get me worried. I'm huge on research, so I immediately got back on all the Super Duty forums, the truck forums, I scoured YouTube, I'd scoured the internet for information about this cam and lifter failure. After all my research, I thought, I think this is a blown out of proportion problem. We aren't having any symptoms in our truck. And I wasn't as worried about it as I was initially reading all those comments. Now, as you would expect on that second video, we got a lot of comments. And very few people were actually having the cam and lifter failure issue. A lot of people were people like us who said, hey, we've had this truck for 25, 30, 40, 60, 80,000 miles and haven't had a single problem with it. And we liked reading all those comments. It kind of reassured us that we weren't gonna have a problem with our truck. But another comment we kept seeing is, do an oil analysis on your engine and that'll give you more information. So we did. Now remember, the whole reason we bought this Godzilla was because we didn't wanna have those engine problems we were having with the power stroke. Now, if you've never done an engine oil analysis before, send a sample in, I'm gonna tell you how easy it is. You can either get online to Blackstone and pay prepay, and then they send you the bottles, you send your sample in, you get the results in the email, or you can just go onto Blackstone's website, request the oil analysis sample bottles, they'll ship them to you at no cost. You go ahead and follow the process of capturing the oil, 
send your credit card information back into them. They charge your credit card and send you that analysis back. Now the actual taking of the sample, I had done at the dealership because the dealership was changing the oil, but they make it super easy. There's a small sample bottle inside the black bottle. The black bottle does have some material in it just in case any oil would leak inside the first bottle. So you get your sample in here, tighten up the lid, put it inside the black bottle, screw the cover on here. They also give you a bag you can put your bottle inside so that it doesn't leak inside there. They give you a prepaid envelope to ship it back to them. And there's a card you fill out. It's gonna have your name, your email, the engine making model, the vehicle year making model, the sample date, the miles on the oil, the miles on the engine, and then on the back you can list information like um, was the oil changed when the sample was taken? Are you interested in extended use oil so they could tell you how much life was left in that oil you changed? And then you could extend it for the next time if there was plenty of oil life left. Have you used any additives? You list those down below. And would you like a TBN for an additional cost of $10? A TBN measures the amount of additive present and is only run on engine oil. So that card's all you need to fill out. You put it in with your sample, put it in this prepaid envelope, you send it back to them, and they email you those results. Now let's go over these results that are a little bit scary for our Godzilla. Now when I sent the sample in, I was fairly confident and definitely hopeful that we would get results that says everything looks great. That is not the case. So when I first got the oil report, and I'll put it on the screen here to look at, it's got a lot of great information on it. It's got elements and parts per million on this left-hand column, and then it compares it to the universal averages on the right-hand column. So that was the first thing I looked at. Now we sent this oil sample in at 24,500 miles. We currently have about 25,900 miles on the truck. So we put another 1,500 miles on the truck since sending the oil sample in. Um, so I looked at the numbers first. It's looking for aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, lead, tin, molybdenum, nickel, manganese, silver, titanium, potassium, boron, silicon, sodium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, and barium. Sounds like the element song. Um, but it's really cool. You can see in our oil sample what the parts per million were of those. And then you can see the universal averages over here on the right-hand side of the page. And immediately, my eyes were drawn to this bold number. Iron, 29, universal average, 9. Now, as you can imagine, seeing that number was not confidence-inspiring. If I've got 29 parts per million of iron and the average is 9, that probably indicates a problem. What is extremely helpful is that they give you a comment section. And I wish I would have read the comments before I looked at the elements parts per million. So they say, Chad, iron is a little high in this first sample. Universal averages for the 7.3 liter overhead valve engine show typical wear after about 5,700 miles of oil use. If this oil was in for longer than average run, then the iron may be okay at this level. Or maybe it's lingering wear in material if this is just the second or third oil change. Or perhaps it shows a little extra steel wear due to hard use, for example. In any case, we'll see how it trends from here. Other metals are in good shape. Fuel dilution is harmless at 0.5%. The viscosity read in the 5W20 range. Check back next time. So those comments were really helpful in that they gave me a couple possible reasons that the iron level could be high. First of all, where after 5,700 miles of oil use. So that number of nine universal average is the average for the amount of oil after 5,700 miles of engine oil use. We have 5,900 miles on this oil sample. So there were about 200 miles more than the universal average. That's not reassuring at all because you'd think, okay, maybe we'll be a little bit higher, 200 miles, maybe 10 instead of nine for parts per million of iron. To have 29 instead of nine, that's a little concerning. Next possible cause. Maybe it's lingering wearing material if this is just the second or third oil change. We bought this truck with about 19,000 miles on it. I have no idea how many oil changes were done before we bought it. So it could be one, it could be two. If they're following the computer system, maybe it was two. Maybe they went 10,000 miles, the computer said change the oil, 
and they went another 9,000 and traded it in. I'm not sure. So this could possibly be the second or third oil change. That is one possibility. The other reason they say, perhaps it's a little extra steel wear due to hard use. I would say that is not possible. We didn't use the truck very hard at all. We towed a 12,000 pound fifth wheel. We towed that to and from Michigan a couple times. We towed it across the state a couple times, an hour and a half, two hour drives each direction. So I wouldn't think I would call that hard use for a Godzilla engine to tow you know, a 12,000 pound camper. We also tow a 5,000 pound Nautique boat. I wouldn't call that hard use. And we tow a jet ski that's super lightweight. I definitely wouldn't call that hard use. So I wouldn't say that anything we've done since we bought the truck has been hard use. So I'm not thinking that's a possibility. He did say, we'll see how it trends from here. And I like that because it's nice to have on this form multiple columns for your next oil analysis. We are definitely gonna do another one. I hate that that number is 29. It does worry me that there is something starting to happen with this engine. But we've already got 1,400 miles on since that. We'll let it go 3,000 or 3,500 miles. We're gonna send another oil sample into them and see how that number compares. If after 3,500 miles, we're in that average range of nine and the iron, I'll feel much better. But if after 3,500 miles, we're at all over the nine, that's gonna worry me because 3,500 miles is less than the 5,700 miles of engine oil use that is the average for the samples they receive. So you can see how this would be, to me, a little bit of disturbing news or a little bit of disappointing news. I was hoping I'd get completely, you know, all in the clear, your report is good. Just like when you go to the doctor and get the blood work done, it's nice to see good numbers when they get back with that report. It's a little worrisome when you see bold numbers and they mention them in the comments, like, hey, this is something we need to watch. So a little bit too much iron in the engine oil analysis. We're gonna definitely keep our eyes on it. And I would like to know from you guys, Leave those comments. We read every single comment. If you've got the 7.3 Godzilla and you sent your oil into Blackstone, what are your numbers? Have you been high on iron? And do you think that's an indicator of the camshaft and lifter possible future failure? Like I said, we're about 25,000 miles right now. We're not quite up to that 40,000 mile mark that people are having the issues. This truck doesn't just sit and idle very much, which is what we've read a lot that some of the trucks that have the issues do. So I'm hoping this is just a fluke and we won't see it again, but we're gonna do another oil analysis and find out. I'm looking forward to seeing those comments from you guys on what you think is going on with that 29 parts per million of iron rather than the, inders rather than the average of nine. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it informative or entertaining, we'd love if you'd give us a thumbs up. If you're not already following us, we'd love to have you click that subscribe button and follow us along click the bell beside it so you get notified when we put out new videos. We'll see you again the next time. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we can put some more miles on this, send that wheel analysis in, and get a better report card the next time. Go ahead and pull the Ford Pass up here. We'll do our app remote start. Get a sound of that exhaust note coming out. Oh, this is interesting. It says your vehicle cannot remote start because the hood is open. Let's remedy that. Once the high idle turns off, it idles down nicely.